Hello everyone, welcome back to another Dawson video. As you all know, I do not edit any of my videos. Like I've always said in the past, I do not edit. Why don't I edit? Because one, I don't fucking know how. Two, I don't have any editing software that I can even use or even know how to use on this laptop. So, what's the point of editing? And what's the point of editing? If a lot of 90% of your shit is going to get copyright claimed. Like a big ass minefield, but people don't understand. <clears throat> now, I promised myself I wouldn't make this video. I promised myself this. But I always tell myself the one thing I can actually promise you is nothing at all. Because promises are always broken. Friendships will crumble and fall. But here's the thing people don't understand about friendships. Let, let's get into the game that I have uh, playing in the background. This is what I'm going to be playing over. And some of you guys will be, why are you playing in creative? Because I find creative easier. I'm sick and tired of dying. I have a survival world, but I prefer the creative world when I'm actually doing these types of videos. Because I can build anything I want. And I wanted to get it done really quickly. Now, th this is one of the castles that I'm going to be making. This castle is fr Castle of Friendship. Now... You may be wondering why I called it the Castle of Friendship. The Castle of Friendship is basically where I'm going to be putting all the friends I've met over the years and what friends have lost their way. And we'll be going into that room in the castle that is already pre-made in a bit here. Now, before I go into details of what happened, uh, let's just say Zodiac and me are no longer anymore close. We're not close at all because he, he felt I was attacking him when I had a friend who wanted to know a little bit more about voice acting. And he felt offended when he gave them advice. But you gotta remember, when people are learning, what, what was the one thing you normally did in school when you were sitting in class? You were either sitting like this... You were sitting like this, or you would be sitting like this. Now, all the information that was presented to you, it may have looked like you weren't paying attention, but your teachers always knew that you were. Because how did they know you were paying attention? The eye contact. It was with the eye contact. The uh-huhs. And sometimes you do something with your head, like... I understand that. Some people do it a lot differently. Some people have their own methods of actually displaying that they are paying attention. Now, when it comes down to teaching something to someone, you gotta remember not everyone learns the same exact way. Not everyone is going to seem like they're paying attention when they actually are. Now, that becomes an issue if you're trying to teach someone. Now, when you're trying to teach someone, you always want to ask questions, are you paying attention? Now, if you forget that crucial question when asking someone they're paying attention to what you're telling them, it causes a lot of issues making the teachers feel like, oh, the, the student's not paying attention in class, and then they write it up on a slip, and then the principal is called in, and then, I've, and then their parents are called in, and they're like, Hey, they're not paying attention to class and then the person goes I was paying attention in class I just have different ways of showing that I'm paying attention now everyone else is different everybody else learns it's a separate way now some teachers felt offended can feel offended if it doesn't feel like they are actually doing what they're supposed to be doing like teaching them but you got to remember that not everyone's going to want to pay attention in your class. A class is only there to teach the people who want to learn. 
Now, when you want to learn, you'll be making more eye contact with the teacher than you than the normal person. Now, this would go the same with virtual reality because he was teaching her in VR. So she she was very good. She's a very giggly person. I enjoy talking to her on the weekdays. She's an interesting person to talk to. And we were in a Gary's Mod server together. Now, I don't say names because I only brought up Zodiacs because he got into an argument with me about, like, hey, you set me up. Hey, you set me up. I had nothing to do with a setup. I told you ahead of time she was giggly, she has a tendency to giggle at random intervals, which you probably did not read in my messages, because I specifically messaged you that letting you know that she can tend to giggle from time to time. Now if you pay attention to when someone messages you, and if you're, the person you trust is telling you, hey this person does this, hey this person does this. You should start taking into notice that what they're saying might be what's going to happen. They might laugh. Probably should keep that information in your head for when you actually meet them. Every single time a teacher meets a student, teacher, they're like, okay, what can I do to get your student better involved in my class? They're going to say, well, our kid likes to do blah, 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 blah. Our kid likes to do this. Our, li our kid likes to do this to keep them in tune of what they're doing. So the teacher will try and incorporate something that the student actually likes to do into the conversation or into the demonstration. That way, when it comes down to actually doing the test, the person they know who has trouble focusing is going to be focused on the test because they already know what to expect. Now you can do pop quizzes all you want. Teachers do a lot of pop quizzes to see if you were paying attention. Now, this is something that people don't normally do, but the reason why that is, is basically because test pop quizzes are really weird and really rare. But you gotta remember, not everyone's the same way. Just to make sure someone's listening, you should always ask the question, are you paying attention? You shouldn't just jump to conclusions and be like, they're not listening to what I have to say. You should always say, hey, are you paying attention? And if they say yes, they're paying attention to you. And then ask them like a question of what you said and what you were saying to them to see if they actually were. If they didn't understand the information and give you something else of what you asked, then you should try to go over what you already said so that it goes further and deeper into their head. The more you hound on that, the bigger and better they get at listening. And then they're like, okay, now I understand. So this does this, so I have to do this to get this done. Most teachers do not do it because it's a little weird. Now, when you're actually doing all this stuff, you gotta keep in mind, a lot of this stuff is hard to do. Now, when you're actually trying to teach someone something, or show them something, try to keep them intrigued. Even if they don't seem intrigued, ask, what do you think about this? If they go, Eh, you shouldn't be offended for it because the eh means improvement. It means improvement for you to work on. Basically, a meh means it was okay. You just need a little bit more work on that specific thing. Now, if you were to think about it this way, I have swords. If I were to practice with my swords every single day and go outside every single day, and swing my swords around, practice swinging them, and practice doing parries, I would get good at the craft. But there's always going to be someone that's better than me. That's the thing. You got to remember in every single field, 
that you go into, there's someone better than you. See, what I do, I work for Cutco, and what I do for a living is if I move all the way back here and get my backpack and open my backpack, this is my sample kit they gave me. And then I bought off of them because I got sick and tired of the messages they gave me. Now people are like, oh, how much you get paid for it? I'm like, I get paid 20 bucks a week because it's true. I get paid 20 bucks a week because I can only seem to get one demo a week. If I get paid 20 bucks a demo and I'm only getting one a week, I'm getting $20 a week. That's my pay grade. That's what I'm getting. They have a manual for me to follow. I got to flip through this big blue book of all the stuff I'm going through with the people Bill, every single time with my spiel. It's a hard thing to do that people don't understand. It's hard to actually go out of your way, make the phone calls when you're not used to it. But I was used to it in high school and it's still difficult for me. Now, you may be wondering, why is this difficult for you? Because one, low recommendation count. If I were to pull out my little book, you would see I have very low recommendations. Like I'm getting five recommendations, one recommendation, two recommendations. It doesn't help me because only one out of those five are going to pick up for me. So if I have one recommendation, the likeliness of them picking up is zero. I do online demos too, so that I don't have to leave my house. All I get in my sample kit is a few of the tools that are a part of the kits. Like, this is a part of our entertainment pack, the peeler. I love this peeler. This is an amazing peeler, to be completely honest. I love this peeler. I want to try it out on other things as well. Because what I had issues with, with the peeler we currently had at home, it only had one blade. So I had... Actually, we didn't even have a peeler. So I would always peel it with a knife. Now when I got this, I was always practicing with it because I wanted to be ready with it when it came down to my demos. And I loved this peeler because it was so efficient, so sharp, that it peeled everything I could think of. I went to a carrot, peeled the carrot. I went to a potato, peeled the potato. I went to other things and peeled them. Made it a lot easier for me. Now, none of my family even knows I practiced with these stuff because they were never home around the time when I was practicing using my, my stuff. Now you guys may wonder, what do I say? What do I even bring to the table? I bring my cut cut. As you can see, I use this pairing knife relatively a lot. This pairing knife, I enjoy. The pairing knife we use downstairs, I fucking hate. Why do I hate it? Because I cut myself a lot with it when no one else is home. Because it's handle so fucking short. That it makes it difficult for me to peel with it. And I wind up cutting myself even while I'm peeling. Which makes it frustrating for me. But with this long handle, I can peel it easily. And I, the more and more I practice with them. And the more and more I messed with them. I started getting more enthusiastic about them. Now this one I don't really use that much. Even when I'm practicing. Because it's extremely long. And I don't use it for very much. Because it's technically supposed to be used for small meats. Now, you may be thinking, why do you why do you sell knives? Because one, it was a job that I was recommended to by a friend. Two, I was really looking for a job for the longest time after I lost my Six Flags job. Because they were idiots with it. But like. This was the only thing I had at the time. 
This was the only place that actually physically hired me. I did not care if I was getting paid 20 bucks a demo. As long as I could get a demo a week, I was fine. Wanna know why? Because one, I'm still getting paid either way. And if I sold something, I would still get paid. But if I sold more than I was actually doing demos for, I would get a lot more than I was. So, say someone bought like a homemaker set. A homemaker set costs a lot. I'm not going to go down the prices because I don't feel like going into the price. They cost a lot, basically. They, they cost around a thousand. Let, let, let's just leave it at there. Now, if someone bought a homemaker set, I get 600 in terms of sale merch, of selling. Now, with that, it carries over to my ink to the Cutco service pay and it deducts into the CO pay. Now once it deducts into that, that's what I would be getting paid. Now if that's higher than what I, as the demos that I actually did, I get paid that amount. So say I may, sold a thousand dollars worth of Cutco, I get a hundred fifty dollars. If I do five demos a week, I get a hundred demos. But for me, it's hard to get even one demo a week because of such the low recommendations. I need more recommendations even to get there. And it's a lot harder to actually do that than people think. Because when I tell you I'm making 20 bucks a week, I'm physically making 20 bucks a week. Because I can only manage to get one demo a week. And since I can only work through recommendations, I can't really call anyone random. I have to physically be introduced to them. I can't just call you up and be like, Hey, would you like to hear my spiel? No, I can't do that. I have to physically know you. I have to be recommended to you. Now that becomes apparent the longer and longer you actually you go through it. Now there are ways for me to get more and more demos a week, but to be honest, I have no no clue on how to even go via that. That is why I go to the meetings. Because the meetings have the old, the older people who have been doing sales and sales for Cutco for longer. Now, what does that tell me? I can learn from this person. Even if I don't look like I'm paying attention, I'm still paying attention to what they're telling me because I need this information to further myself in my studies. Now, people may say, oh, you're just feeling about all this stuff because you're upset about study. Fuck no. I don't give a shit. Does it look like I give a shit anymore? No. When, when he actually banned me and permabans me from his overtone, I gave a shit for a while. But then as I realized... I was being completely and utterly redundant. Basically, what I'm trying to say is I don't give a shit anymore. I know I should, but does it really matter? See, a friendship's like this house. See, you build it up brick by brick by brick to make this. It's like someone like making something in Minecraft. But, the, but as soon as you remove one block, you ruin the integrity. But if you were to make that your house out of sand, if someone were to hit one of the blocks of sand, your sand house falls apart. Probably wondering why I'm doing the giant trail of redstone.
We'll figure out in a second. Okay, I forgot. I need the redstone torch. Oh, fuck. Oh, that happened. Well, basically this was supposed to show what happens if you just jump to conclusions, but whatever. Well, basically if you jump to conclusions and blame someone for something that they didn't actually do, it causes a chain reaction. <laughs> and basically you wind up losing everything that you guys technically built upon each brick represented each mountain of trust but the person you trust the most should always be the one you should be able to count on but you can't always count on them you want to know why because they're always gonna have personal issues and since everyone has issues in their life you gotta remember everyone has their own different things that they have to deal with even if you don't understand it see someone you can know someone really well but you could and they could be doing work and they could just tell you I'm making 20 bucks an hour and you'd be like well there's no job that actually physically does that well if you don't know what their job is maybe you should start by asking Hey, what work exactly do you do? And then they'll probably wind up answering that question. So you always got to remember, don't always jump to conclusions. Jumping to conclusions can lead to a friendship falling apart. Now, if you guys have noticed, I've just been building up on this castle that I've been working on. Now, you all think this doesn't even look like a castle, do you? Well, castles aren't perfect. All castles are different and designed differently. And the thing, they're not all perfect. So you could have a castle with such a bizarre design and it doesn't even match anything else. Basically summing up what people are, everyone has a different preference to everything everyone has a different way of doing everything so you got to remember you're not just accounting for this person you got to account for every person it's the same thing when you do for working on any projects when you're working on a project with another classmate you got to remember these classmates have different skill sets different abilities and different knowledge so try assigning them to what best fits them if that section best fits them, they'll do it. If that part does not best suit them, they're going to wind up skipping it and not doing it. So you got to keep everyone's abilities intact. 
and everyone's abilities in mind when doing a large project. Now, when basically what I'm trying to go based off of, god damn, this music is loud. I don't even know how to turn it down. Well, basically what I'm trying to say is the more you judge someone based on no facts, you should always try to understand the facts. The reason you want to understand the facts is because you want to be ready to understand where they're coming from. Now, if you say there's no facts to back up your claim, well, maybe you should ask them for their side of the story because there might be facts in what they're saying. Sometimes the weirdest things you can possibly learn are from people you don't even know. Are from people you've only known for such a small amount of time. So you gotta keep in mind, this person can probably teach me something new that I don't already know. Even if you're old or in your 20s and above, you gotta remember, we can still learn things from other people. There, there's things we can still learn. Now, I'm not upset at Zodiac. Here's the thing. I'm not upset at him. He's just so lost in his mind. He's just too lost in his mind think, thinking of how people are coming for him. I understand his profession is voice acting. And it can get really competitive. But you don't want to bring that compatibility to your friends. The moment you bring that to your friends, they'll slowly start to trickle away. Because they'll try to joke with you, they'll try and mess with you. There's always going to be those times your friends are going to mess with you. People got to understand this. There's times where people are going to mess with you. There are also going to be times when your friends are going to try and play a prank. Now, the only reason I I wanted my friend to talk to Zodiac was because his profession was the profession she wanted to go into. And he had a lot of insight into it. So it was like, well, I know a guy, a really nice guy, that could possibly help you. His name's Zodiac. I will try to talk to him to see if he would be down to talk to you and help you out. The moment... The moment I introduced them to each other, everything fell apart. Now here's the thing, both me and Zodiac are almost exactly the same. But there's one thing I did not tell him what I was. When I went to 16personalities.com for my new Yes I Can class, we did a personality test. And when I did my personality test, something interesting came up it said I was an advocate I did not know what an advocate was until I looked it up but what it rated me as my mind as an extrovert was 47 percent my introvert was a 30 was a 53 percent which I do spend a lot of time in my room not doing much and playing games since I'm always secluding myself I understand that I'm an introvert because I don't want to get get out of the house that often. My energy levels was, uh, my observant levels were 45%. My introvert levels was 53, was 55%, meaning I was more observant. I was less observant and more intuitive to basically try and butt into things and try and solve the problem. My nature was thinking 40%, feeling 60%. I'm a very sensitive guy. You, you may not think it, but I'm sensitive. I was actually crying the moment I figured out our, our Yes I Can family member Matty Rossiter passed away. I was crying. My parents wouldn't let me go to the funeral. I actually c almost killed myself. I was debating on whether or not to kill myself. I never told my parents that and I never and I probably should have. 
but I didn't want them to worry. I actually almost killed myself. And this was when I had the swords. This was when I actually had the swords in play. So I, I had the tools to kill myself. I even had a whole message typed out, ready, and then I didn't go through with it because I had friends who worried about me that would always message me. And they're the only reason I'm technically here. Which people don't get is good friends aren't just the friends that you can count on. They're also the friends that when you need them most will be there even if they aren't physically there. You're gonna have times where your friends move out and move somewhere else where you can't reach them. I know that feeling all too well because I've had some of my friends, uh, my friends uh, moved away and basically I don't even get to hang out with them anymore, which kind of upset me. But they still try to figure out ways to hang out with me. Like I'll play a game with them, I'll play something with them. And some of my friends even got Gary's mod. Now, what I loved about Gary's mod was that we could all play together and we didn't have to worry about anything. So we could play together, we could all be in a Discord call and do stuff. Now the issue we had was we, we long ago wanted to do a, basically do a, well, we wanted to do an airsoft team, but we just didn't have the time to actually physically do it. That was the issue. We just didn't have the time to put it all together. We wanted to do it, but we couldn't. The reason being, we all got really extremely busy to the point where we couldn't even do what we wanted to do in the first place. Now, you may all be one being like, I'm over exaggerating, I'm over exaggerating. But you 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 gotta take into account other people's feelings. Uh, I always take account into every person's feelings, even if I'm not working or not. Because if you think about it, if I'm not putting my customers feelings into perspective then what am I even doing there if I'm not making them feel comfortable then I'm doing something wrong I always want to make my customer feel comfortable in their own home even though I'm visiting I want them to be comfortable around me you always want to make the other people comfortable around you because the moment you uh, take your workplace compatibility competitive side into account and then put it onto your friends you're gonna fuck over a lot of friendships and the moment you fuck over your friendships it's the moment you start losing friends the more friends you lose the less friends you have so if you think about it this way if you were to have five friends and bring in your compatibility from your work into your real life and you start losing all your f you lose one of your friends because he doesn't want to hang around you anymore because all you do is scream at them and accuse them for stuff that's one friend down you have three more left no I said five you have four more left the other friend leaves because you're too critical well, and overthinking things and not not thinking of everyone as a whole we're all worth something and the moment you take away our worth is the moment you lose someone so if you were to demean them or take away what they originally were and be like that's horrible it's the moment they start questioning are you truly my friend and then the moment you push them further is the moment you push them out and then you lose your next friend. The friends that were closest to you are almost all gone. You gotta keep in account that we are all different. We're not, we're all special snowflakes. 
We all have our own strengths, weaknesses, and different things we can do. Zodiac, you're good you're good with making worlds. But you gotta remember, worlds is your specialty. So is voice acting. Me, I'm good with making avatars, making YouTube videos, going out of my way to put together concerts. I still have the poster from the 13th annual Summer Meltdown and a signed poster from Surf Rodeo, the person who originally made Surf Rodeo. Now, you gotta remember, the person who made Surf Rodeo, it was a non-profit. So is Yes I Can. Yet, on the 13th annual Summer Meltdown, we got Unified Highway. We got Zip Trap. We got a lot of people. We got so many people. We even had Modest Yahoo one day. One of the meltdowns. We had, had Medicine. Well, you, you might not know Medicine, but... It was basically Nako's band. Nako was there. I got a picture with him. I wish I could pull it off of the old iPhone I have. But I can't do that because nobody makes those chargers anymore. So I can't charge it to pull it off. I loved meeting Nako. I loved meeting all the different bands and what they did. Because each band had their own strengths. They had their own weaknesses. Even though they were competitive, and being bands and trying to be the top musician on a cover page for a magazine, they still found time to get together, do meetups, talk to one another, be nice to each other. You gotta remember, it's the little things that matter the most. It's not the big thing out of the honcho, oh, this person gave me a $100 are a million dollars that's not the thing that keeps you friends that shouldn't be what's tying friends together it's not the money that should tie you guys together it's being unique the moment we take away our uniqueness is the moment we take away part of ourselves now going back on to my 16th personality report my tactics my judging was 53%. My process specting was 47%, which means I judged you more because I was trying to figure out what's going on. How is this going to go down? What's going to happen? Okay, we need to work on this. We need to work on that. This is what we need. This is what we don't need. See, I have a lot of good ideas for for my 187th voice but I I don't have the I'm too afraid to bring it up because I'm judging everyone else's appeals when I should technically be embracing them but you gotta remember it's just the server we're there to have fun man we're not there to just play with friends we're also there to on a roleplay server to roleplay as Clone Wars characters. So you gotta remember everyone has their own strengths and weaknesses in the battalion and they're always willing to learn new things. That's why we do trainings. Trainings are there to improve our skills. Skills that might need working on. So if we're, we're ignoring these skills that we need to work on, we're basically fucking ourselves over when it comes down to an event. Because when we get to an event and no one's listening to the high ranking officers, what does that cause issues for? It causes issues for the whole battalion as a whole. So you gotta keep in mind, you don't want to just think of your friend as, oh they're my friend because of this. You need to think of your friend as someone who will have your back even if they don't talk to you the most. They're still there, technically. They're just probably busy with real life stuff that they can't do 15 other things to actually back you up. They may be in a game with you and you're having issues and you may think they, they're gonna come to your rescue, but they might be all tapped out of that game, unable to help you. They might be doing something that might pertain to work 
It might pertain to the, whether or not they keep their employment. So you need to stop looking at things like, this person sent people after me. If someone threatens you, go ahead. Someone yells at you, you shouldn't unfriend them just because they yell at you. You shouldn't get mad at them just because of a petty argument. Like, you set me up. Where's the evidence to set you up? I messaged you, we're in a Discord. I even told you I was muting the Discord because of the feedback. The issue with being in a Discord call on your computer when you're in VR chat is you get a feedback. You will always receive feedback, which gets really fucking annoying. I know I'm not supposed to swear on YouTube, but fuck you, YouTube. It's a stupid rule. You wonder why 90% of your people on your platform are moving to Twitch? That's fine. You got rid of 90% of the rules? That... You got rid of... You added rules that basically caused people to leave. It's not that we don't like the platform. We still love the platform. We still visit the platform. But the issue is, you made so many ridiculous rules in the last update that no one wants to stay anymore. Now that becomes an issue for you because you have people who've made content leaving your platform. You're wondering, why are people leaving? Why are people leaving? All, we're losing all of these high YouTubers to Twitch. Where are they all going? They're leaving because they're all going to Twitch because of your stupidity. You may be a good company. You may be thinking, oh, this is going to be good. This is a good idea. Ask your content creators, the ones that are that is going to affect the most, especially the ones that you are going to to affect. The small channels can barely even make a dent on YouTube anymore. Why is this? One, we can't do what we want to do anymore. The only reason everybody else with higher subs can is because you carry them over as grandfathers. Basically you went, okay these people were here the longest, here you go. You get carried over and get to keep all your shit. Now, for the small channels that were on at the same exact time, you were like, no, you guys are too small. So, we should be carried over too. So, if you're thinking about it this way, you're going to lose people. You're going to lose the thing that makes your platform unique. Now, I know Zodiac is still going to work on the horror map. And I'm still planning on doing a video on the horror map. I don't give a shit what he says, if he says he doesn't want me to be involved in anything anymore. That's up to him, not me. But the moment you start hounding on your friends about something that is completely and utterly ridiculous, before you even act, you need to think, even I do this, even though I'm, a, I'm an advocate, I'm like, okay, how might this affect? We even came to an agreement. You're, you're like, you don't talk to me anymore. And the only time you talk to me is on VR ch chat. Let's think about it this way. I can't look at your shit every 24 fucking 7. Even though I have not, the app on my phone, I can't look at it 24 fucking 7. Why? Because I have real life that I have to worry about. I have demos I gotta try and set up. I wanna get paid. I wanna get money. I wanna make money. And I can't do that if you always assume I'm not there, but I'm trying to be there. Real life gets in the way. You gotta keep that in mind. Even when you think that you're in the right, someone's gonna point to you and be like, you're in the wrong. There's always gonna be the person who points out your flaws. You gotta remember, we're all flawed. Even if you're extremely good at voice acting, 
you're still flawed in your craft. You can hound and hound and hound and hound on your craft. And someone could say, you're amazing at it. You're great at it. You're amazing. But you're always going to get those people who are going, man, needs work. Needs work. That's because no matter what you do, there's someone better than you. Even the best person in the world knows there was someone better than them. And that person's probably passed away by now, making them the new best. You gotta remember, it's it's a never-ending cycle. Okay, you're the best out of all the voice actors. Good for you. Think about it this way. There's someone better than you out there. In any country, there's someone better than you. You're not the best in the world. I'm hard to tell... I'm sad to tell you all this, but you're not all the best in the world. There's always going to be someone better than you. But it doesn't mean stop beating on your craft. It doesn't mean stop being who you are. What I'm trying to say is stop thinking and jumping to conclusions. There's always going to be someone better than you. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to fail. We all have failures in our time. We all have failures that we're going to go through. Now you got to remember that. I know I'm not the one with the most subscri subscribers on this platform. I know I'm not the one who's probably going to get this buddy pushed out far. But you guys got to remember. Nothing is perfect just like this castle if I were to fly it all the way up with this castle and you were to look at it it's imperfect right there's not enough towers there's not enough buildings but what people don't get is that no castle was exactly the same if all castles were made exactly the same where is the uniqueness in them? Where is anything in them? Now if I come over to here, this is going to be the next one. Now you're all like, oh, it's just a wall. That's because nothing is built in there. It's just the wall. I always start with the wall. People wonder why I start with the wall. Because the wall is the head front to anything in terms of the castle. You always want your place to be protected. Now, it did hurt my feelings when he did that. I was crying for the longest time. I did cry. But I don't want to post that video. He even made my friend upset. You gotta keep an account to everyone else's feelings before you actually do something. When you're teaching a class, and all teachers will tell me this, I know I... Yes, I can. Teachers will also can also confirm this when you're teaching a class about special for special ed kids. You're you're not gonna get them all into all the stuff instantly. It takes time, and time you need to buy. Now, not everyone's gonna have the time to do everything they've ever wanted. And no one's going to have the time to do every single thing they want to do. Now, basically, what I'm coming on is everyone has a bucket list they want to do. No one's going to complete their bucket list. The only people who are probably going to complete their bucket list are the people with millions of dollars. you got to keep that in mind. Keep that in mind for the rest of your life. The people who are going to be the ones who complete their bucket list is the people with millions of dollars. Now what does money do? What does money do to the average human? We all want it, right? But here's the issue. We think of money 
more than we think of actual living people. And that's sad. That is completely and utterly sad. Because we're not thinking of humans anymore. We're not thinking of each other anymore. We're thinking of all these different things that don't even pertain to it. We should be focusing on how everyone else interacts. But where is that? We don't have it. Do we? Now you could be the best voice actor you may think you are. You can be the best person you could possibly try to be. But at the end of every road, there's always going to be somebody better. Than I mean, I don't edit my videos for the one reason raw footage is the best footage. Because it shows the reaction and how people feel. You attack one of my friends, I attack. I try not to attack back. I may not speak to you that often. So what? A friend should not always have to be there to talk to. I tell all my friends, if you send me a message, I will get back to you as soon as I can. The reason I say this is because I know I'm not going to get back to every single one of them. I am 100% positive. I have, I have messages from friends that I still have not replied to. And that is a fact. Now why? Because I'm only human. I can only do so much a day. See, if I were to go into my phone now, it would probably have a shit ton of messages. If I were to go into my Discord, I'd have a shit ton of messages from other friends. I'd have a shit ton of messages from my friend in Arizona. I've had I would have a shit ton of messages from other people. Why? Because I can't answer them all in one day. I mean, I can send a hello, but I'm not going to get the full replies because I, if I were to do that every single day, where's my time for work? Where's my time to make phone calls? Where's my time to set up demos so that I can get paid? None. There is no time. So you gotta keep in mind, there's only so much one person can do. There's only so much a person will be able to do. <coughs> I really need a water. But I don't want to go. But basically what I'm trying to come tell you guys is, don't let work affect your IRL life. Even if you think it might not, think it all the way through. Is, is what I'm about to do what I would do for work? It's good to be competitive in, its, in your craft, but the moment you bring that into your friends' lives, you're going to lose friends as fast as you're making them. You could have someone you trust entirely and that person could do one thing wrong and you dump them because they did a few things wrong. No one's fucking perfect. I mean, I, I have a little bit of voices I can do too. But I don't do them because I'm not good at them. There's only so much I can do with them.
I'm better at setting stuff up and getting dock work done for servers and getting dock work for events and doing all that type of stuff than anything else. But there's still someone out there better than me. No matter what, there's still going to be someone better than me. No matter how much you think so, there's still someone better than you. No matter how perfect you are, there's someone better than you. Just because someone who asks you for advice doesn't seem like they're paying attention, they could be paying attention, try to ask a question. Or go like, hey, do you have any questions for me? Hey, do, do you need me to explain anything further? Hey, are you paying attention? Hey, so how would, do you want to know how to go about this? Basically, asking these questions goes about how you want to see if the person's actually in tune to your conversation. These are issues he doesn't go through. You need to go through these things with people who are learning from you. Because the moment you don't, is the moment you lose people. Because you don't ask why. You, you get into argu redundant arguments that... I didn't even want to say this, to be honest. They're, they're completely redundant. Oh, they set me up. Uh, okay. 90% of the time, I'm like, uh, okay. I don't know why you're bringing this up to me. Because I don't understand the scenario. You're, you're just throwing things at me that I don't understand. I wasn't there for it, so how the fuck should I know? You're like, oh, the reason I did this was because of this. I'm like, I wasn't there. Calm yourself down. Rethink what you're saying to other people. Because, to be honest, Zodiac, 90% of the time you told me shit, <coughs> I did not understand why you were even telling me. I mean, I understand what, why you wanted me to look at the map, because I was intuitive to work on the map with you, but I had to work on avatars, I had to work on work, I had to go to class, I had a lot of stuff I had to do. I'm still in my 20s, I'm still learning, even if you're in your 30s. You can still learn, no matter how much you think you know, you know nothing. And that's a fact. No matter how much you think you know, no matter how much you think you've learned, that's just 1% of what you need to learn. You may think you've learned 100% of what you need to. Wrong. You've only learned 50%. Oh, I've learned 100%. I've learned 50%. No, those two don't exist. You've learned a fraction of what you should. And that's what you, you keep forgetting. The moment you start a friendship with someone, you can know them very well. You can know everything about them, their favorite color, what they do. But there's always going to be things they're going to keep to themselves. Like, they're going to keep their work life secret. They're going to keep, if you were to ask how much you make, they're going to keep, try and keep that as secret as possible. Why? Because they don't want people to work. The moment people start worrying is the moment a friendship either becomes a supportive or they become too helpful. See, the reason I only make 20 bucks 
a week is because I can only get a demo a week. That's all I can legitimately do due to my low recommendations. Now, going back to the... I know I'm going back, back and forth between the 16 personalities. My other thing for my 16 personality was assertive was 49% and turbant was 51%. So I'm less assertive than anybody else. I will be more outgoing than anybody else. If you were to meet me online, I'm outgoing. If you were to meet me in person, I'm outgoing. I may be shy at sometimes, but that's because I don't know you yet. You can meet someone online. You can get close to them, but you know nothing about them until you've met them in person. So before you jump to conclusions on people you only know online Zodiac, think about this. Have I actually met this person IRL? What do I know of this person so far? Put into account everything they've said and then try to piece it together what they're trying to tell you. Even if they seem like they're falling away from your side, that should not be an excuse to get rid of them. That is a bad excuse to get rid of someone. The moment you always do that is the moment you lose a lot of people in your life. And the reason that happens is because they don't want any, they don't want to come back. But I still consider you as a friend. Even if you dumped me. You get out of everything you've ever done. I still consider you as a friend. You are just lost. Even no matter how old you are. You can still be become lost in your own thoughts. Now. Whether or not he can you can find your way back out of your conundrum is entirely up to you. It is not up to me. It is not up to a god. It is up to you. Everything is up to you. Nothing has ever been up to me. What I do is what I do, and it's because I do it because I feel comfortable. I have times where I act weird because that's just me being me. But I'm just going to end this before I end this video today, guys. We're going to go into this part of the castle and we're gonna go all the way up here this is the chest room and if you're wondering what that sign says that's the friends room this is where I will place down anything that basically pertains to any of my friends. So you guys can see, pink is pink flowers is the friend of the year. Friend that is lost to themselves is zodiac. One eighty seventh members that inspire me is Fletch, Prin, slash Stack. The reason I put slash Stack is because he got a lower character name. Congrats on that, bud. Now, let's come out to the balcony, jump down, and we will end this video. First, I need to grab a flower. Now, what I did in Minecraft since uh, Maddie Rosser had passed away, and what I'm 
going to be doing at the end of each video is adding a flower. And the whole plan here is the cover listing of flowers at the end of each video. As you can see, it's in honor of our Yes I Can Angel, Maddie Roster. I will be placing t today's flower right here. And there will be a new flower each video that I do in Minecraft. And I will be placing one each Minecraft video. The iron golems are just here to keep all of the mobs out. But as you guys can see, I've well constructed this thing and it's still a work in progress. So, uh, not done yet. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I will see you all in the next one. Mm -hmm.